Luke did his original tests last week on AMD's dual graphics, or the ability to basically run your integrated GPU and your discrete GPU, that's like an add-in card, in Crossfire. Have you got an unlocked Intel processor? Do you want access to exclusive offers? Click now to join Intel Club Enthusiast and get started. So we showed you the numbers that we got in a couple of games with AMD's latest Kaveri 7850K APU alone. That APU running with a discrete graphics card, an R7 250 running by itself, and we showed you what it's like when we pair them together in dual graphics mode. Well, you guys asked for an expanded test, so we've thrown two more discrete graphics cards into the mix, an R7 260X and a G4 750Ti, and we've thrown in more CPU so we've got a 4670K, that's a Core i5 from Intel, that we've run with discrete and on board, a 6800K, so that's AMD's own last generation APU, and an Athlon 760K, which is a very inexpensive CPU from AMD with no onboard graphics at all, but based on the same architecture as that last gen APU. Now, before we dive into this, I want it to be clear that Kaveri has other benefits that are not being tested in this video. HSA, or Heterogeneous System Architecture, allows the GPU cores on AMD's latest APU to be utilized for general productivity tasks much more efficiently efficiently than previous architectures allowed. It can share system memory rather than having data copied back and forth between the CPU and GPU RAM over the PCI Express bus, which opens up a whole new world of cooperation between your CPU cores and your graphics cores. This enables today better performance with some image filters, improved thumbnail creation in Windows, better performance in LibreOffice, and some other things. But HSA is mostly about the future with some very exciting developments such as OpenCL 2.0 with a compliant driver expected in early 2015 and all that good stuff. The bad news is that we'll have to wait for software development to catch up, but the good news is that application developers and compiler writers should, if AMD is to be believed, find it easier to code for HSA systems, which should help drive adoption. With all of that aside, if you're a value gamer and you're looking for a system today, what do you buy? Well, we saw your comments on the previous video and on the forum and science wins. So I was let loose and I was able to test almost all of the things. All right, guys, as these graphs are a lot more compact with data than our normal graphs, I'll give you guys some tips on reading them. Fairly standard fare, the CPU and GPU are listed on the left hand side. So you can see what row that correlates with. To help you guys differentiate between the rows, I've also color coordinated each row with based on its CPU not its GPU. So you can see how the different CPU combinations stack up that way. Also, there's a dollar value right beside the name of the combination, and that dollar value is an estimated guess based on numbers that I pulled from Newegg.com. So these are American prices. If you're an international viewer, I would highly suggest when you get to the dollar per performance graphs later on, that's the second set of two, that you base them based on uh, numbers in your own region. Also, these dollar values do not include the cost of the motherboard, as that can vary quite a bit and was not a super important variable in these tests. I'm sure you guys will come up with your own conclusions and let me know in the comments below and on the forum and all that kind of stuff, but here's some conclusions of my own that I gathered from looking at my graphs after I made them. There seems to be a sweet spot for both of these games. In Far Cry 3, that sweet spot is about $7, while in Bioshock, that sweet spot is about $5. That makes sense because Bioshock Infinite is easier to run than Far Cry 3, therefore your dollar per performance goes down, which is a good thing. Um, but you're going to need to be able to run certain games, so it all kind of makes sense. Although, to be completely honest, for most of these setups, the price that you're paying, you're getting 1080p on high at no problem, so it makes a ton of sense. Uh, especially one last thing, personally I would not buy a solo 4670K for gaming, by that I mean 4670K and no discrete graphics card. It does not perform very well and personally I'd rather pay less than a 4670K and get a 760K and an R7260X or pay $10 more and get a 760K and a 750Ti and get even more performance on top of that. That makes a lot more sense to me, but again just let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and on the forum. So a main takeaway I would grab from this is that going back a few generations and grabbing a processor from that time at a really low price and then buying a nicer, more powerful graphics card and pairing those two together is an awesome combination and you can get a lot of power for your price with that combination. 
Another thing is that 1080p gaming has been never this viable at a price point like this. You can run games at high at 1080p and get epic frame rates. That's really cool to see because value gaming has always kind of been a shove under the bus, but now you can go with a very nice resolution, very nice settings, at a very nice price point, and have a really good experience. And the word console killer was brought around a lot when the consoles were first coming out, and we all knew it would be easier to surpass consoles later on down the line. I didn't realize it would be this fast. With certain setups that we have in this video even, and with 750 Ti, 750, and 260X now taking up that, it's really easy to actually just beat the absolute crap out of a console. A lot of console games aren't running at 1080p and they're not running that fast. And with a setup like this, you can run it at really good frame rates, at 1080p, at high settings, with AA on and all that kind of stuff. So it's a very interesting setup and I hope you guys are going to take advantage of this kind of stuff if you're building a console build in the future. Just so you guys know as well, our Star Citizen team is in second place, and I know most of the times I upload a video and call it what place we're in, it's inaccurate, but I think this might be the first time it's actually accurate. So be sure to join up, we're gonna have a lot of fun, and the dogfighting module should be coming around sometime around April 18th. So Luke's testing reveals a bit of a problem with the way the term value gets thrown around to describe inexpensive products. Value is not the same thing as cheap. I understand that for some people, they're gonna have $300 to spend on a PC, and even if they could have something 10 times better for another $10, that won't be feasible. So they will need to settle for the reduced price to performance ratio of a cheap computer. For those folks who do have the regular income that would allow them to save a couple more allowances or skim some money off a couple more paychecks, the advice I've always given, wait until you can afford something decent, continues to ring true. Grabbing a Kaveri today and running with Onboard, then upgrading later with a discrete graphics card does make a fair bit of sense if you're impatient and you don't want to wait to save up another 60 to $70 for the cheap CPU and mid-range GPU up front, but make sure that when it comes time to upgrade to a mid-range GPU, you are picking one based on its individual merits, not just based on dual graphics compatibility. The R7-260X or the 750Ti cannot take advantage of the onboard graphics for you know enhanced gaming the way the R7-250 can, but because they're so much better, it doesn't matter. This may change in the future, when the onboard can be used for AI or, or something as a coprocessor, but we're still a fair way away from that, and if you're buying a graphics card today for games you can play now, and you want the most for your money, then you're gonna wanna get a proper discrete graphics card, just like has been the case up till now. Sorry, Dual Graphics, uh, you're just not the most for my money at this point in time. Speaking of getting the most for your money, we've got an exciting new sponsor. Now, I switched to an electric shaver three years ago because I was too cheap and more importantly, too lazy to deal with the shit of buying replacement blades for my razor. It does a decidedly worse job of removing hair from my face and to my dismay, it turns out I'm still supposed to buy replacement blades for the thing. I haven't replaced the blade on it once, so I guess it's time for a new strategy. Dollar Shave Club, you know the, our blades are Fucking great guys. Their whole concept is that for a few bucks a month, less than the price of buying brand name razors and cartridges with unnecessary like vibrating handles and like built in speakers and stuff, you can get fantastic blades shipped straight to your door by a highly skilled and diverse team of people and bears. The cost savings is great, but for me, the appeal is really the convenience of having fresh bathroom stuff delivered every month. No more like, you know, maybe I can get like one more shave out of this elvish replica blade. Na bam! There goes the jugular. They've also got Dr. Carver's Easy Shave Butter, which is clear instead of foamy, so you can actually see what you're doing, and One Wipe Charlies, which are basically butt wipes for men with a peppermint infusion. I tried to say that with a straight face, but I couldn't do it. So start shaving time and shaving money. Join now at dollarshaveclub.com Linus and see what it's all about. It's available in the US, Canada, and in Australia. 
Guys, like and share this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, and leave a comment on the Linus Tech Tips forum linked in the video description if you want to discuss this product or technology. We didn't really feature a product in this video. Or if you have constructive criticism for me and my team, don't worry, we can handle it. Also linked in the video description is our support link with options to buy t-shirts, give us a monthly contribution to help us keep making videos, or give us a kickback whenever you buy random junk on Amazon. So check that out if you enjoy our videos. It helps us out a whole bunch. Oh, and always, thanks for watching, guys, and don't forget to subscribe.